what we've realized that allows for rapid transformation and permanent transformation is instead of giving people things to help them cope with their challenges, is we get rid of the root problem that's actually causing their challenges instead. Way more efficient, way more effective, a lot easier, a lot more fun. And the, the results last a long time because you're not spent, expending all this effort and energy trying to keep coping with the, the issue that never went away. Cool. I think we're live now. I'm going to double check, but uh, hello, Aaron and Steve. Hello. <laughs> How you guys Hi. both doing? Good. Doing wonderful. Awesome. Been great. Yeah. Thanks being here. I'm, it's, it's, I'm thankful for being here. So thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, Steve, you've been part of the the community hustle and flow chart, and you've attended events, you know, when we were allowed to in person in Florida, yeah, like earlier this year. Um, so you've always been an amazing community member and just action taker too. And then Aaron uh, has you know made an amazing impact on Matt and I, and uh, it's, it's actually Matt's wife's birthday today. So I told him I was like, go spend time with your wife. <laughs> I'm like, I got this. So uh, I'll speak on behalf of him a little bit, but we were basically, Aaron's worked with us after the podcast we had, which was I don't know, maybe a month and a half, two months ago now we released it. Got a lot of good feedback from the community members. So we figured, okay, why don't we actually show visuals to this thing, this, this process that Aaron has to essentially eliminate these patterns and these beliefs that we we all have that kind of stick us into these similar patterns, you know, the ones that specifically we don't want. Um, you know, Aaron, maybe remind me from your perspective <laughs> what you worked on with me, because like, honestly, I think it just seeps into everything. You know, so, some procrastination, overcommitting. Th those were the two main things. Like, it's so interesting when you do this work, um, it's all about subtraction. Everything we do is success through subtraction. So instead of adding more things and you're like, yeah, I'm working on this and I've got this practice and I'm doing these habits, that doesn't happen. All we do is we kind of go in, we pull out the problems and the, the invisible walls that are keeping you stuck. So when those are gone and then you're just in flow, it's hard to remember what your actual problems are. People will show up and go, what was I working on? So it's, it's, it's interesting because people expect everything to be like, I'm doing this new and this is new and this is new, but it's actually when you subtract things, it's this easy, graceful shift. Um, and oftentimes you just forget what you what your problems were, even if you've been dealing with them for years or decades. That's exactly what it felt like. And it it's an effortless shift, like in the way that you walk th uh, people through it and you know how I've experienced Matt has and, and Steve on the line here, that's why he's here. Uh, he's actually going to walk through this in real time with with you, with us, everyone watching. And I think it's going to be cool because it'll kind of make it a lot more practical and probably make more sense than just hearing it. You know, you have some cool visuals and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, agree. Um, I think, Aaron, I'll pass it to you for now. And and uh, Steve, I don't know if uh, I'll probably take you off screen for a little bit here, but hang out. We'll bring it back and let's get started. Cool. OK, so. What the work that I do with clients is eliminating the biggest mental barriers and roadblocks that are keeping entrepreneurs and high achievers from being able to achieve the success and the happiness that they're looking for. And the way that we do that is we go in and find out what the root problem is causing people to be stuck. And when people are getting in their own way or they're stuck, they're usually experiencing symptoms like um, it could be procrastination, perfectionism, difficulty setting boundaries, money blocks, harsh inner critics, self-doubt, anything where you don't need another book or a course to tell you what to do. You know what you need to do, but there's something internal that's holding you back and keeping you stuck. So our work comes in and helps break open that stuckness so that you can be in flow. And what we've discovered what we've realized that allows for rapid transformation and permanent transformation is instead of giving people things to help them cope with their challenges, is we get rid of the root problem that's actually causing their challenges instead. Way more efficient, way more effective, a lot easier, a lot more fun. And the, the results last a long time because you're not spent, expending all this effort and energy trying to keep coping with the, the issue that never went away. So, what we do is we take any pattern, any problem, any challenge that someone is going through, and we go, what's causing this? What's the root? And at the end of the day, for most 
behavior and mental roadblocks where people get stuck. It's, it's a matter of beliefs. Because as humans, we act according to what we believe to be true. If you believe that cats are dangerous, you're going to scream when you see a cat. You're going to run away in the opposite direction. If you don't believe that cats are dangerous and you believe that cats are lovely, you're going to act differently. You're going to think differently. You're going to feel differently around the cat. Nothing's different other than that one belief. So when we can go in and actually work at things at the root level, at the belief level, we can create instant change, radical, huge changes in people, even when they've been stuck for long periods of time. So what I was going to do, since we don't have a, I can't really draw on the screen, we're going to do this super old school today. I'm going to draw a very simple diagram that shows the interrelation between actions and thoughts, behaviors, and beliefs, so that people can go ahead. away really quick. Okay, cool. So at the end of the day, are the results that we get as entrepreneurs and high achievers are based on the actions we take. If we sit around in a chair all day, we're probably not going to get the results that we're hoping to see. So our results are dependent on the actions that we end up taking. We take action, though, not just randomly, but be based on the thoughts that we have, the thoughts that are in our head, as well as the emotions that we feel. Those two things together determine our actions. So if I wake up in the morning and my thought is, I'm really excited to build my business and I have emotions of gratitude and excitement, I'm probably gonna take actions that would be in alignment. I'm probably gonna get on um, the phone and, and do work and, and move forward. Whereas if I wake up in the morning and I have thoughts of I'm awful, I'm horrible, I'm a fake, I'm a fraud, I'm a phony, and my emotions are anxiety and fear, my actions are probably going to look different. It would make more sense for me to procrastinate, to stay in bed, to do something else. Now, we can fight against our thoughts and emotions. It's true. Like, we can push against thoughts and emotions. If I have anxiety and fear and I think I'm worthless, I can push against those and still get to work and still take action. But when we have to push against and fight the thoughts and emotions that show up in our mind and our consciousness every day, it's exhausting. It leads to burnout. It leads to stress. It leads to frustration. And it leads to lower quality work and our actions and, the res and our results suffer. So what we want to do is be able to change the quality of the thoughts and the emotions that show up. The thing is, it's really hard to change your thoughts and your emotions manually. So if I have a thought that I'm worthless or I'm stupid, if I manually and try to change that thought, if I try to tell myself, I'm smart, I'm great, I'm smart, I'm great, that doesn't really change anything. Like, it doesn't really affect true, deep, core level change. It's like trying to put some icing over something and it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Likewise, if I have emotions of anxiety and fear, those emotions are there because my thoughts are creating those emotions. I have thoughts that I'm worthless. If I have thoughts that I'm no good, it's going to impact the quality of my emotions. I'm going to have fear. I'm going to have anxiety. So these things are impacting our actions, which impact our results. The thing is, the thoughts and the emotions that we have, they're not random. We have them for a very specific reason. The thoughts and the emotions that we experience throughout our day are there because of what we believe to be true. So it's really our beliefs, the beliefs that we hold to be true that impact the thoughts and the emotions that we have, right? So again, if I go to, um, if I have the belief cats are dangerous, that's going to impact the thoughts that I have and the emotions that I feel when I'm around cats going to impact the actions that I take. Our beliefs act as, a, as filters. So as we go throughout our day, that's kind of like a lens right there. Everything that we experience during the day gets filtered through our beliefs. So if I have a belief that I'm not likable and I get a phone call, from a, a, a client, and she starts she starts yelling at me. 
and I have this belief, I'm not a likable person, and perhaps I have the belief I'm not capable or I'm not competent, that action or that experience, excuse me, of getting the phone call gets filtered through the belief, and I'm going to have thoughts of, it's true, people don't like me, and I'm not capable, and I'm going to have emotions of uh, worry and distress, and that's going to impact the actions that I take later in the day. Now, if I can impact things at the belief level, if I can get rid of the belief I'm not capable, if I can get rid of the belief that I'm not likable, and then the, the phone call gets filtered without those beliefs there, my thoughts are going to be totally different. The quality of my thoughts is going to change. I might I have the possibility of thinking, you know what? This woman's having a rough day. Or, you know what? I can change this very quickly. I'm quite capable and competent enough to make a difference and, and change this up. So when we change what we believe to be true, our entire experience throughout the day can be totally different. We can feel energized instead of frustrated getting off calls. We can feel excited when we have challenges instead of worried and stressed. And all of this happens automatically. So what we're gonna talk about today and what you're gonna experience is how powerful and everything, how powerful it is when we can impact your life at the belief level. Instead of you trying to change your thoughts on your own, instead of you trying to meditate for an hour a day to create an emotion or feeling of calm, which then just snaps right back when you have these you know, thoughts that keep showing up every day, we're going to look at how changing things at the, the belief level will impact all of this easily and without effort. So the way that this works, let's take a look at this. We all have patterns of behavior. And our patterns are typically either emotional, like um, I have self-doubt and worry every single time I get on a phone call and have to have a conversation about budget, project budgets and money. That could be a behavior pattern. Or it could be, um, or excuse me, that would be an emotional pattern. That would be a feeling of fear and worry every time I talk about money. Or it could be a behavior pattern. Every time my boss asks me to do something, um, I get triggered and angry. And I start yelling. That could be a behavior pattern. So we get stuck in these similar ways of acting and feeling during the during our work weeks that don't serve us. They hold us back. They um, drain our energy. They take up all this time, and we feel stuck. And it feels like we just keep repeating them over and over. And there's nothing we can do. We'll try and go in. Okay, this time I'm not going to get angry when the boss talks to me. This time I'm I'm not going to uh, feel frustrated or worried when they start talking about money. I'm just I'm just going to stay calm. But that doesn't work, right? It doesn't work because underneath all of these patterns, patterns are created and held up by beliefs. Those little circles, I'm going to draw this out for you, represent a belief. So we usually find that a pattern is made up of a cluster of beliefs. So Let's pretend I have a pattern of mm, perfectionism. Every time I write a social media post, I have to um, review it five times, and I have to have someone else review it. I'm terrified of, of, of having any typos, and it has to be perfect, and I'll write it, and I'll rewrite it, and it takes me two hours to put up a post on social media. And it's eating up time, and it's frustrating me, and it's stressing me out. And I go, that is a pattern that is not working for me. That is costing me time. It's costing me money. It's making my life miserable and frustrating because now I hate posting to social media, even though I know that's an important thing for me to do in order for my business to succeed. This doesn't work for me. Okay. Well, that pattern exists because there are a cluster of beliefs holding it together, holding it up. Sure, you could try to change your actions, right? You could try and say, I'm going to set a timer and write something in 30 minutes. But if you have thoughts and emotions that are telling you that it has to be perfect and anxiety if you post and it's not perfect, it's gonna be really hard and stressful to take that action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be like, what beliefs 
are causalities. What's underneath it? What's the root, right? So if the, I have this pattern of perfectionism, I'm going to go in and say, what are the beliefs? What would I have to believe to be true in order to keep experiencing this over and over again? So if I have a pattern of perfectionism, I might have the belief I'm not good enough. I might have the belief I'm not a good writer. It's possible I might have the belief that if I make a mistake, I'll be rejected. I might have the belief that what makes me successful or what makes one successful is being perfect. I might have those four beliefs. And so what we would do here at MindFix is we would go in and we'd identify and find out what beliefs each person has that's keeping their pattern in place. And then one by one, methodically and systematically, we'd go in and eliminate each of those beliefs one at a time. When you start to eliminate beliefs, what ends up happening is the pattern weakens. My fear might of, of posting to social media might go down. Or I might only need to do one or two revisions instead of four revisions. Right? So as you get rid of beliefs holding patterns together, the patterns start to change and shift and weaken. And what happens is when you get rid of all the beliefs holding a pattern up like that, you've gotten rid of them, the pattern can't stay up. Pattern goes away. It literally disappears. You can have someone who is a perfectionist and can't post to social media. You get rid of their cluster of beliefs. Suddenly they can post to social media three times a day. They can do it in 10 minutes. They don't have to double check their spelling. They're not worried about typos. That kind of incredible change happens all the time, consistently, because we act according to what we believe. So when you get rid of the beliefs causing you to act a certain way, you think, feel, and act differently without any effort. Yeah. Eric, I want to I want to pop in here because this was mind blowing when you actually did this with me. Yeah. It was that exact process, and you're basically reiterating what one of my big things was perfectionism. But talk about like how um, like how you identify the root because my root belief, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I felt like I didn't actually get to the root like by myself. You had to guide me there. So um, explain like what folks might think is the root of their beliefs. And, you know, actually, you know, like it's probably a little deeper than that. That might just be one of the, the mini beliefs that you have to pop or even higher up. Sure. So there's, the, there's a million dollar question. And this is what we use with all of our clients and people can use this on themselves anytime they want. I ask myself it probably 10 times a day. The question is this, once you have a pattern, that you know you want to shift or a pattern that you know you want to change, something in your life that you want to be different. The question that you can ask yourself and mull over is, what would I have to believe to be true in order to keep experiencing this? That is the question that allows you to take a step backwards and go, what belief would keep me locked into this pattern? So asking yourself that question kind of takes you out of the, this is who I am, this is my personality, this is what I'm stuck with, I'm going to have to read books, I'm going to have to learn how to deal with it. it, takes you out of all of that, and it puts you into a space of, wait, I'm doing this for a reason, what would I have to believe in order to keep experiencing this, feeling this, or doing this, or, or uh, taking this action over and over and over? That's the magic step, that's the magic question. When you can make a list of these are the different things that I would have to believe to be true in order to keep acting this way, that sets you on the path to breaking free because that allows you to understand why you're stuck. Um, and one of the ways, sometimes people go, I, I don't know. I, I, would, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know how to answer that question. Right. One of the things that you can do is right before you experience your pattern or your behavior, like let's say, um, or right, right after, actually, especially when it's a behavior or pattern. Let's say your boss yells at you and you get super angry and frustrated. What you can do to get some clues about the thoughts and the beliefs that are going on behind this, beneath the surface is to rewind, go back to that moment in time, slow time down, and notice what the thoughts were that showed up 
right as the event was happening. So if you're getting yelled at and then you start yelling back, you slow time down. You might realize that you had the thought, nobody, uh, nobody believes in me. Nobody respects me. I work hard and it doesn't matter. I feel powerless in this situation. You might notice some of these little thoughts were trickling up and that's what actually triggered the emotion, the feeling, and then the actions. So when you work backwards and you get the thoughts, which come right after the beliefs, it goes beliefs, thoughts, emotions, actions. When you can figure out what those thoughts are that showed up in the moment, it's a lot easier to then go, what would I have to believe to be true in order to have those thoughts? So that's kind of the trick is if you can't figure out what your beliefs are, go back in time, slow things down, and notice the thoughts that were coming up. Once you have that list of thoughts, then you can re-ask that question. What would I have to believe to be true in order to have those thoughts? That's interesting. Yeah. So it's if you can make it a habit to kind of not stop yourself, but identify right after that event, whatever that emotional response you feel. And I know what everyone has a different type of emotional response as well. Like I know when we were working together, I was telling you, I usually feel anxiety in my stomach. Like that's where I know something's a little off. And I mean, it could be triggered by so, so many different things. But what are some other ways that people feel the emotional I guess, imbalance when something's a little off? Um, I have seen it everywhere. There are people who feel uneasy in their stomach. There are people who uh, have tightness in their chest. For me personally, it's almost like my throat starts constricting. The throat tightens up. I've worked with people who have like tingling on the top of their head or at the end of their nose. I had some guys like my toes just keep tapping. Other people go like my shoulders and everything start contracting. But usually it's... Um, some type of contracting, tightening, heaviness, sinking, or, or tingling feeling. Though some people are like, you know, I feel like flushed, like a temperature change throughout my body. Usually that's a, those are some of the signs that you're having a, a reaction. Yeah, and, and after doing the work with you, and it was, and, and I'll just tell everyone here, it wasn't like a lot, a lot of work. I saw changes literally from day one, and you even were like, holy crap, dude. What's going on here? Um, really quick, I'll get back to like what the before and after was for me, and then I want to go over to Steve to actually do this thing in in uh, you know live action for everyone watching. Uh, but it's interesting, yeah. You mentioned okay, so if you can identify how you feel in an uneasy or in you know in a situation, you just feel like this isn't right. It seems like that's a perfect time to then go to the thought exercise that you just said. It's like this reminder, like oh, I'm a little uneasy in my stomach. Let's do a little rewind, slow time down from this event that just triggered me. And then, yeah, work backwards, like you said, to the belief. Yeah. And the one thing I'll add there is that this work really is work with patterns. So if you're just walking down the street and someone starts screaming at you and running towards you and threatening you and you're like, I'm feeling uneasy right now. Right. Like that makes sense that like that's an event. What we're looking at is repeated patterns of every time I get on the phone and talk to a certain type of person, I experience a sinking feeling in my stomach and anger. Every, you know, most of the time when I'm around older males and they start talking to me in a certain way, I realize I'm having this kind of reaction. So what we want to really be doing is looking at patterns of emotions or behavior that are causing us problems, not to over psychoanalyze every single instance we feel uncomfortable or frustrated during the day. This really is for removing the blocks that are keeping us from being more productive, effective, successful versions of ourselves. Okay. So, and, and that's great clarification. Cause yeah, I was, it, you could take this to everything and then probably lose your mind. Yeah, <laughs> You're exactly. trying to make it perfect. So what are some common patterns that you just have found through your practice, through guiding folks? Because there's got to be just some very similar ones that come to mind that most people experience. I mean, procrastination is absolutely hands down one of the big ones. Like a, a avoidance of doing what we know we need to do. Um, that can be a serious problem. Um, Self-doubt. Uh, perfectionism is a big one. Um, Fear and anxiety reactions that are triggered by different stimuli during the day. It can be a conversation. It could be a topic. It could be a type of work. Um, we, uh, money blocks, like issues around money, uh, 
when people are just feel like they've hit limits and they can't go past them or they have a lot of fear or, or um, kind of stories around their their money and how they interact with money in their lives uh, difficulty set setting boundaries and saying no is a big one <laughs> I'll talk about that really quick. Yeah. So like that was that was the first thing you and I worked through was that. And you gave me an exercise, which I thought was awesome because it showed in real time how fast your work actually translated to action from my part. And you had me create this Google Doc and kind of track every single thing I said no to. And because my whole thing was like, oh, I got all these emails. Cool. I'm going to uh, schedule a call. I'm going to do this thing on, you know, and it's not something I really wanted or it doesn't align with what's the vision. And this is showing up outside of business as well, of course. Yeah. So over committing like, hey, let's go hang out with friends. Let's do this. Let's pack our schedule. Let's try to do everything under the sun. And then I started listing these things in for a week, I think it was. And you were watching my progress and it just felt effortless. It actually became a game for me to say no. It was fun. It wasn't this scared thing. And it was crazy because it was like an hour session with you. It was like, just identified yeah. these weird, like not weird things, but these beliefs and these patterns that I didn't, I, I kind of knew the patterns, but I didn't know the beliefs that I had to pop to then release that whole thing and flip it. Right, like what we found out is you had this pattern and you were super clear and you're like, it's hard for me to say no, cool. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we went, we figured out the, I don't know, it's like three, you had maybe three, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be two, sometimes it can be 15, like different patterns are different sizes for different people. Okay. But um, we figured out what your the beliefs were that were holding your pattern up. We went popped them, and suddenly, instead of you having to practice anything or do anything or spend any more time on it, when those beliefs were gone, there's nothing that was creating any resistance or stress anymore for you to yeah. say no. It was just like I just say no. That's it. So yeah, it it literally felt effortless, and it was like this this seems like voodoo magic. This should not be possible, but it's like you're bringing logic and a sequential pattern to. I mean, I guess patterns, so a sequential process to the pattern, you know, uh, flipping just anything you feel like is out of whack like that. I knew I needed to fix that. I wanted to fix it bad, but yeah, reading the books or meditating or just telling myself I'll do it today. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you can't really brute force this thing and make it last. That's mm -hmm. what I found. Absolutely. So uh, anything else before we bring Steve on and Steve, no, I think you I ready? Have buckle up. <laughs> Maybe All right, cool. There he is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me see. Let me let's do it in that mood so you can see everything. So I just want to extend this to the group. I know there's folks watching and people after the fact, but if you have any questions at all, throw them in the comments. And after, after this, we can get into that because uh, I think this will be pretty fun. So I'll let you guys do this. Maybe I'll remove myself so you guys can chat it up. Cool, sounds good. Hi, Steve. Hi, Erin. Hi. So we talked just briefly a little while back about, you know, in, in preparation for this show, and we talked about what it was that was your pattern, right? Like, what was the pattern that you'd like to focus on and work on? And if I remember correctly from what you shared with me, you uh, were experiencing kind of anger and frustration when people were challenging you and challenging what you do um, with work. Is that still true? Is that still the case? Is that still kind of what you'd like to, to look at today? I think so, yes, yeah. So does that pattern negatively impact you in your life? Like that's holding you back and kind of feeling like a roadblock for you? Uh, it used to a lot. I've been trying and kind of slowly progressing. I mean, it still is a challenge, but I've been trying to just kind of like put in the back of my mind and not deal with it when it comes up. So I would say, yeah, it probably still, still something that I is just challenging. Okay. So the pattern then that we're going to look at is um, when people question, is it my decisions or my actions or my choices? Like what, how would you describe the, when you get triggered and angry? Um, when somebody is not happy with the response you give them and they keep trying to ask more, they think they're asking more clarifying questions, but they're just trying to 
I feel like they're digging at something that they're not happy with the response I gave them and they want me to tell them something different. Okay. So it sounds like when people start asking you clarifying questions, that actually makes you feel angry? Um, in the sense that I know what the reaction is going to be. So I'm protecting my, I'm trying to protect myself, my family by not maybe telling them the, telling them what I'm doing, the, the, the real, um, I know what I would tell them. If I told them a response, they would say, well, that's stupid. So why am I going to put myself in that position to tell them what I'm actually doing when I'm going to get a negative response from them? So I'm going to pause you. So it sounds like you're saying, you know, what, how people are going to respond to you. You know what they're going to say, you know, they're going to tell you that's stupid. So this sounds like a pattern that this is not with anybody. This is with just a few people who you know what their reactions are going to be? Yeah, closer you know, family, um, family, closer friends, you know, cl closer relationships. And you already know that they're going to tell you that it's stupid, like what you're saying is stupid? Um, I think so. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's, I, I do know certain people that are going to say, well, that's, um, the, the, that is, not a, I just know that's what they're going to think, or I think so. Okay, so you're, you are, uh, um, I guess it sounds like there's a pattern of assuming that people are going to think what I'm doing is stupid, and then there's a pattern of feeling angry when people question you about what you're doing. Yeah. Correct? It's kind of like yeah. two different patterns here is there's this assumption people are going to think what I'm doing is I'm stupid, yeah. and then we also have, so it's a, I'm going to just write this down. Assumption people will think I or my actions are stupid, right? Actions are stupid. That's one pattern that it sounds like you're going into conversations with this assumption and you're expecting it. And, and you would like to not have that expectation and, and be guarded going into conversations. Is that correct? Yeah, because I won't bring something up because I, I know how the conversation is probably going to progress. And like say, this is not with everybody, but there's certain individuals. So, Okay. And then the second pattern is that when people do question you, yeah, you get really, really angry. And in the past I have, yeah, I've gotten very, yeah, very, you know, very angry in the past. So that'd be something that'd be nice to change. Would you like to make habits so that if somebody questioned you or questions what you're doing, you just have no reaction? It's just kind of a flat, cool, thank you. And then you go on with your day? Now, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Got it. Very angry at uh, reaction. So, so what we're, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a belief or two, just depending on how quickly you clear beliefs. Okay. And we're going to find a belief that feels true to you. That's part of this um, kind of holding up your pattern. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to clear it. Now, since this is just a demo, we're not going to be finding all of the beliefs that are holding that pattern that's locked into place. We're just going to find one of them. So what you may experience, you may experience a rapid, huge transformation or change, or you may experience nothing at all because you may be, you may have 10 different beliefs kind of holding it propped into place, or you just may have a couple. It's very different for every pattern and very different for each person. Sometimes people take a long time to clear a belief, and sometimes people take just a few minutes. It really is a, a unique individual experience um, but when you spread it out over the course of a few hours, you're usually able to get rid of all of the beliefs holding a pattern up. Um, but again, for the sake of the demo, we're just going to go through one to show people how it's possible. Okay. So what I'm curious about is when, you, when someone starts to question you, you share your truth with someone, you share what you're doing in work, you tell them this is what's going on. This is what I have going on. Yeah. They start going, why are you doing that? Yeah. Why are you doing it that way? That makes no sense. And they start questioning you. And then they start digging. Okay. 
and you start to notice like <laughs> kind of that, that the emotion and the feeling starts showing up. Just like what I talked about with Joe a few minutes ago. Let's take you back to a recent experience where that happened. What I'd like you to do is slow time down and I want you to become aware of the thoughts that are bubbling up in the background, kind of the judgments or the, he's thinking this, she's saying this, I'm like this. Like, what are the thoughts that come to your mind when someone starts digging and questioning? I would say probably, you know, uh, fear, self doubt, um, I think that was probably. So those are going to be the emotions that you're yeah. feeling. What are the thoughts? What are the, the voices thoughts? in your head? Yeah. Like what are the, well, words? the thoughts? I mean, you really want, I don't think those are appropriate for, for this, this uh, broadcast. No, no. They're not appropriate. Well, you want, you don't want to know the actual words, do you? I'll, I'll not tell you the thoughts. Um, the, uh, I guess a thought would be that, what um but basically is like that they don't maybe they don't want me to have success you know that um that they're i am trying to think here um cool that that's a great one that's i would think of that success thing is like if i tell them something and they are questioning me it's like well what what makes you what makes you worthy of doing this so maybe it's success driven yes so what you're experiencing is fear and self-doubt and then there are thoughts of like wait what makes is it like kind of what makes me worthy and to be able to experience this kind of success you start questioning yourself right yeah i had i had an experience a year and a half ago that i had a pretty somewhat intimate conversation with somebody that wasn't super close and basically got the response was like, Oh, that's, that's good. That's a, that's a lot of work. Good, you know, good luck with that. And so I put a lot of, a lot of fear, a lot of self doubt, a lot of, um, yeah. Yeah. This is great. This is great. So you're having the fear, you're having the self doubt. You get really triggered when people are like, good luck with that and start questioning your, yeah. your actions. Right. So if we take that, we go, what would you have to believe? in order to be experiencing the self-doubt, in order to be experiencing the fear, in order to be experiencing that triggering, scared feeling when someone's like, good luck with that. Right? My guess is that you'd probably have beliefs along the lines of, I'm not capable, I'm not successful, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. Like those are gonna be sitting there. And if someone were to have those beliefs, I'm not good enough, I'm not capable, I'm not worthy, I'm not successful. And, you're car and they're carrying those beliefs around. And then they come into contact with someone that questions what they're doing. You're not good enough, dude. This isn't going to work. If you have those beliefs, I'm not good enough. I'm not successful. I'm not capable, right? Well, of course you're going to feel like scared. Like, oh my God, it's true. You're going to feel triggered. You're going to feel worried. You're going to feel self-doubt. You're going to feel fear. Because you have those beliefs about yourself. And someone's basically coming along and pushing those buttons. You're not successful. You're not capable of that. You're not smart, right? They're coming and pushing those buttons that are there because you have those beliefs. Now, if we got rid of those beliefs and they weren't there. Let's get rid of them. What's that? <laughs> Let's get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, right? And once they're gone and then someone comes up and is like, you're not capable. If you don't have the belief I'm not capable, it might be more of a, okay, thanks for sharing your opinion, right? Yeah. Kind of like if someone comes up to you and they're like, you're a vampire. You don't have the belief that you're a vampire. It really doesn't do a whole lot to hmm. you, right? Like, yeah. you're just like, okay, thanks. Got it. So what we're going to do in this demo is we're going to take one of those beliefs and we're going to clear it out and show how you can get rid of one through a conversation. Okay. Sound good? Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So, um, do you have one out of the ones that I listed that really grabbed at you, that felt strong, that you'd like to uh, get rid of? 
The, what, sorry, can you just repeat the first I couple? Think, uh, we had, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not successful. I'm not. I think, I think that, I think the one that probably is like, I'm not successful, even that probably is the one I think that would be a, a good, a, a huge trigger. Okay. I'm not successful. So we could dive into that one. And what I'm going to actually suggest now that I asked, now that I asked you, what would you like to work with? I'm going to retract yeah. that and take it back yeah. because that is, I'd rather do one that is related to a poor self-esteem feeling. Like I'm not important. I'm not good enough. I'm not competent. I'm stupid. Something that just is like a deep core belief because I think that'll have a bigger impact on you. And you'll notice that in different areas of your life versus something that is related to success. Okay. To a, kind of a smaller, um, smaller, more specific belief. So maybe I'm not good enough. I so that I that's like, a great one. Yeah. Cool. Let's work on that one. So the way that we know that the work is working is we do it before and after. We do a comparison. So what I'd like you to do is I'm going to ask you to say that statement out loud, and I'm going to ask you to tell me how it feels in your body and how it feels emotionally to say it. Like, do you feel sad? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel anything in your body? Just close your eyes, say it out loud, and, and let me know how does it feel to, to say those words. I'm not good enough. Um, you know, I do, I do feel like a little bit of a, you know, heartbeat increase. Um, kind of some tingling in my extremities. Kind of a little like um, chilled, cool, coolness in my body. Mm -hmm. Chilled? Yeah. Okay. And then how does it feel emotionally? Like what emotion do you experience when mm -hmm. you say those words? You know, I guess a little bit of, of sadness that that uh, I would uh, that I would feel that way. Yeah, sadness. Cool. So you notice a heart heartbeat increase, yeah. and a bit of tingling in your extremities, a little bit chilled temperature wise, and then you have kind of just a feeling of sadness. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make sense to you that some part of you, not all of you, not the intellectual part, but some part of you is probably holding on to that belief if you're having this kind of reaction when you say those words? No, I think so. I think mo mo most most definitely, yeah. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Contra like Again, if we say something that we just don't believe at all, if you say out loud, I am a scarecrow. I am a scarecrow. Do you have any of those reactions in your body? No, no. Because you just don't believe it. So these reactions that you're experiencing are clues that tell us that some part of you really is holding on to this belief that you're not good enough. And as you go through the world with this belief, I'm not good enough, remember like we talked about, that's filtering everything you experience. When someone says something and it's filtered through, I'm not good enough, and it triggers you and you have all these emotions. So we're gonna clear this out now because we just confirmed part of you believes it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the work and at the end we're gonna compare and see how it feels for you to say those words. To see okay. it. Cool? Yeah. Cool. So what I'd like to do in order to get rid of any belief, we have to first uncover where you picked this up in the world. Because we didn't come out on day one with the belief I'm not good enough. You didn't show up on this planet going, I'm here and I'm not good enough. Yeah. You picked it up somewhere. And usually these kinds of beliefs are picked up in, in early childhood, usually by the age of five or six. And they're picked up somehow in, in the relationship that we have with our caretakers, with our, usually our parents. And sometimes some parents tell our, their children, you're no good, you're not good enough. Sometimes kids will do you know, a project and be like, look what I did. And it's like, okay. You know, so they never say anything, but their reactions might communicate you're not good enough. Yeah. Sometimes Parents just aren't around because they're working so much and the child comes to the conclusion, I must not be good enough because they're not around me. So it's not that you had bad parents and it's not that your parents did anything wrong. We interpret our parents' actions in a certain way when we're little kids and then we take on the belief. So I'm curious, if you think back to when you were younger, what jumps out at you? Where did you first discover 
the feeling that you aren't good enough? Mm. I don't know if it was, I don't think it was anything for my, my parents at all. Um, so we're talking about like, like, like early, early. Just early when you're younger. Uh, and if some younger. people don't have memories of that, that age, you can go to when you're a bit older. Hmm. Um, because honestly, the way our parents treated us when we were teenagers and throughout our adulthood is usually how they treated us when we were younger. Cause they are stuck in their own patterns as well. So if you have a, disapproving parent, if you have a parent who's never satisfied or is a perfectionist, if you have a parent who never gives compliments, like even if oh. you don't remember anything when you were younger, yeah, I don't remember you're like anything. that's what was the case, right? Are my parents going to watch this? No. Um, <laughs> There's um, no blaming here. There's no, I know, but, but, no uh, but I know, um, you know, I know when I was like in high school, a senior, uh, senior in high school, my, the relationship with my mom and I were, was pretty, was pretty sketchy at times um <clears throat> i have a, a a brother who when is on the disapproving you know not he'd be one to be talking about be like well that's stupid um, did you look up to your brother a lot mm, well who doesn't want to have a relationship with a brother you know i mean i not like i necessarily look up to he's a younger brother i don't know i'd still look up to him his family it's you know yeah Love, loved ones, but so once, you know, um, I have uh, grandparents who question things quite a bit. So I guess a lot of family stuff that is, um, you know, when you hear, when you hear the phrase, oh, I guess he knows what he's doing um, through, through a series of um, conversation, you know, from, from somebody else. So they might, they don't want to come up and they don't want to be forefront and say, oh, good job. When, when you hear it from somebody else, that's kind of disruptive. I'm sorry, I'm not following. When you hear oh, what from somebody else? Um, I would just say so, somebody who's disapproving. So you're saying childhood stuff that if somebody is not approving of what you're doing and you find out later on in life that maybe they were we're gonna pause we're not gonna go oh, to later okay. no no okay so we're Let's trying to go back to when you were young yeah where did you pick up that you weren't good enough and it sounds like you had a brother who called you stupid a lot and you had grandparents who questioned what you did a lot right yeah. Great. Does that feel like where a lot of this came from was your brother and your grandparents? Hmm. I don't, I it's probably just a, that's probably not everything. Um, no, no, no. And there's never going to be anything. Yeah. Everything. It's never going to be comprehensive. This is not a, well, a I guess I, yeah. your chemistry experiment where everything is going to be perfect. It's more of a general, where did you pick it up? Like where, yeah. where did you get this message? And um, it's interesting too, because a lot of the words that you use, you definitely, I would suggest have the belief I'm stupid because that's one of the words. And when you were talking about your patterns is they're going to think I'm stupid. They're going to think I'm stupid. And then here you're like, I had a brother who told me I was stupid all the time. Right? Like that's where these things come from and get locked in with us. So you have this, I would suggest you also have a belief of kind of like, I'm, I'm stupid. And if you want, since we have a clear, source of where that comes from your brother literally told that to you all the time we could actually go back and just clear out i'm stupid if you'd like to do that very quickly well, that's that's good and actually i don't i mean I, that must be a, a subconscious thought yeah that I'm, oh, I'm having, even though i even though i know i'm not stupid i think you know subconsciously that is a thought that's stuck in the yes. back filed away and yes so to be very clear for everybody listening yeah. most of the beliefs that we have we don't consciously believe I had I'm stupid. I was a straight A student. I got a scholarship to college. I went to graduate school. I still had the belief I'm stupid. I wouldn't admit it. But when I talked and in my journal, you would see statements of I'm such an idiot. I'm so stupid. And just yeah. like when you're talking to me early in this conversation, like people are going to think I'm stupid and I don't want to be stupid. But then if I ask you, do you believe you're stupid? You're going to go, no, 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 no. So if we go back and test and see if some part of you believes I'm stupid, we're going to do this super quickly. Say the words, I'm stupid, and tell me how it feels to say. I'm stupid. 
it sounds ridiculous. How does it feel? How like, feel? Um, it. Don't protect feels? yourself from it. Just say oh, the words I'm and see how um, it feels to say. I kind of, I mean, I guess it kind of feels um, draining. Mm -hmm. um, feels. I got to dig deep into my feelings now, huh? Um, Just what's, how does your body and, and mind react when you say those words? Well, it doesn't feel energized at all. Like I say, draining. It does okay. um, a, lack, a lack of energy. It feels, you know, demoralizing. Yeah. It feels, um, feels, you know, empty. Yeah, perfect. We're going to keep with that. Draining, demoralizing, and empty. That's how it feels. So we know, again, it's not like when you said I'm a scarecrow and there's no feeling. There's all this stuff that shows up when you say it. So some part of you, your subconscious, believes this to be true. We already know where this comes from. We figured out that when you were young, you had an older brother who would tell you, you're stupid. What you're doing is stupid a lot of the time, right? Does it make sense to you that if we put 100 kids in a situation where they have an older sibling who called them stupid, stupid and dumb a lot of the time that they've come to the conclusion about themselves. I'm stupid. Probably. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't it be shocking that if we saw that happen, right. We'd go, well, that, that makes sense that they were being told they were stupid by someone they looked up to and their family makes sense. They'd come to the conclusion about themselves. I'm stupid. Right. Yeah. Cool. So your brother called you stupid a lot. You came to the conclusion, you interpreted that to mean, oh, he's telling me I'm stupid because I'm stupid. That's one possible interpretation of your brother's actions. Another possible interpretation of your brother's actions is you weren't stupid, but he was just a bit of a mean older brother and said mean things. But not because you were stupid, just because he was kind of mean. I did the same thing to my brother. I had a younger brother and I was kind of a bully. So I said all sorts of mean things about him that had nothing to do with the truth. I was just being mean. So one possible interpretation is he said those things because you're stupid. Another possible interpretation is your brother was a bit mean and a bit of a bully. And he just said mean things that weren't true. Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. Very possible. Cool. Give me another possible explanation for why an older brother might say you're stupid to a younger brother imagine watching two kids in the park yeah. you're watching an older yeah. brother say that what's and another was, oh hmm? and he was even a younger brother but um oh. but i'll but but uh no say that can you repeat that question again imagine Reason watching two brothers in a park yeah one of them's calling the other one stupid what's a possible explanation for why a brother might do that to the other brother because they don't want to be hanging they don't want to hang around each other they don't want them to hang cool. around so maybe what happened is your brother didn't really want to hang out with you and was trying to push you away kind of like a sibling rivalry thing yeah. so that's why he said you were stupid not because you were actually stupid but because he was irked and wanted to push you away is that possible yeah i think it's very very possible love it give me one more what's another possible explanation for why a brother might say to another brother you're stupid um they I think here um imagine watching it happen in a park what would you what would park. you go oh look at what's going on over there look at what that guy that brother's doing why some, might a brother some uh jealousy yes uh, yes so is it possible that your brother said things to you like you're stupid because he was a bit insecure, had some jealousy. Could definitely be a very good possibility. Possible, right? Cool. So you can see we could be here all day coming yeah. up with possible explanations for why your brother called you stupid. Do you get that the conclusion you reached, oh, he's doing that because I'm stupid, that was a truth, one of many truths, but it wasn't necessarily the truth about you yeah no i know i yeah not the cool. truth but, cool yeah. so the next question i have for you is really important i want you to close your eyes 
And I want you to go back to a scene where your brother is calling you stupid. My question for you is this. Can you actually see and point to, with a size, a shape, a color, and location, can you actually see I'm stupid? Is it there to be seen? Like right now? Um, no, in the memory. On the, on the, on the memory, um, a shape or... Um... Can you see it? Can you see I'm stupid? I, yeah. You can? Yeah. What color is it? Um, black. What does it look like? Like if I was there and I'm like, point to I'm stupid, um, what would you be pointing to? Uh, a question mark. So if I was there and I was your five-year-old buddy or six-year-old buddy, and I'm like, point to I'm stupid, and you you would point to a question mark, I could see a question mark there? Well, you're asking me what, what, what I would see, right? Right, what you actually saw with your eyes. Well, if I'm looking back right now, I'm saying like, you know, a question mark. So but, but, but pause. Yeah. I'm, asking, I'm asking you to go back to the scene yeah. with your brother and look around, do a 360, look around the whole scene, look at your brother, look at you, look at your surroundings. Can you see, like the way you can see my pen and point yeah. to my pen, can you see I'm stupid? In that scene. Oh, I, I no, I can't see. I'm stupid in the scene. Okay, cool. That's a really important distinction. Okay. Uh, like, I, okay. That's perfect. So, what I need your brain to get is that you never actually saw with your eyes. I'm stupid. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Cool. So you didn't see it. So if you didn't see it and it wasn't there to be seen, where has it existed all these years? I don't know. I mean, where has it existed? It's it. Um, where has I'm stupid existed? If it wasn't there to be seen, nowhere. Couldn't point to it. No, I mean nowhere. In my yeah, stuck in my head. You know, it, it wasn't didn't exist anywhere. It was just something that was in my my head. So now we're talking about it's all in my head. <laughs> right. So it wasn't real. It wasn't there. Yeah. It was in your head. Now we intellectually understand that, but it seems like you saw I'm stupid, right? It seems like you saw it. What was the evidence that you actually saw that made you think I'm stupid? You didn't see I'm stupid, but it, you saw evidence that made you think that. What was the evidence that you saw that made you think I'm stupid? The, um, It was the, I think the change of doing something new and not, I, I'm not quite sure here. Um, what was it that happened that made you go, oh, I'm stupid? From what you shared, it sounded like you saw your brother calling you stupid. Yeah, and it wasn't like he didn't like verbally say he was you know stupid, but through all of his through his through his actions. Um, so what did you see? What's an action that you saw that made you feel I'm stupid? Um, <clears throat> the his the the tone in his voice. And what would he say? Um, people will actually you know people actually pay well. People actually pay you to do that. He would say that to you when you were a little kid. Well, not not a little kid, no. But I mean, he. I I'm trying to go back from something that was. Um, I, it this is hard to go back, you know, when we were, you know, super little. Um, well, earlier on in our conversation, you told me that he would say to you, "Well, well that's stupid, right?" He, yeah. Um, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly what that, you know, what exactly that was just because it's okay. You're doing yeah. great. It, like yeah. it's going to be tricky. I mean, it's bringing, it brings up a lot of, uh, it brings up a lot of, you know, a lot of emotions as, you know, just, you know, growing up. So, um, sure. sure. 
what I want to see if I can make clear is what would happen is you were younger, yeah, brother and you would be interacting, and he would make a comment like, well, that's stupid to you. And then that would make you feel like I'm stupid, correct? Yeah. Is that Am I and understanding I, you correctly from what you shared? Yeah, and I think a lot of this triggers, and I, and I know we're not supposed to go future, but I think a lot of this triggers from interactions in adulthood. No, no, I'm going to stop you. Well, it doesn't okay. trigger the stuff in the adulthood. The stuff in adulthood is triggered by the stuff from childhood, which is what we're working on clearing. We clear this out, your experience as an adult would change. I know you're getting it mixed up because yeah. you've experienced things with him in adulthood as well, but we're going back to the root and that's what we're working on, even though that's farther away. That's yeah, what will actually change things. And I'm you. trying, that's what I'm trying to think back on specifics from you know from childhood i don't even need specifics if you tell me that he told you you were stupid oftentimes that's enough to make any kid feel stupid i don't we don't need specifics yeah. we just need to know where did this come from and from what you shared it sounds like you had a brother that called you stupid a lot i mean yeah and i don't know if you really call me stupid a lot i just think yeah and i I might be doing this totally wrong. <laughs> um, and I think actually what we're experiencing here is part yeah. of your pattern. I'm starting to question you. I'm starting to dig yeah. and you're starting to feel fearful and nervous, which is literally one of the patterns that you talked about. When people start questioning me, when people start questioning me, I start to feel stupid. So I'm guessing this is literally your pattern right now is you're starting to feel nervous. You're starting to feel stupid. Like we're actually triggering your pattern because I'm sitting here digging and questioning. And literally in my notes, it's like yeah. when I get questioned, when someone starts digging, I start to feel angry, powerless, and nervous. So here I am literally poking your button, yeah, I mean, putting you into your pattern of feeling stupid yeah. and powerless and angry, right? Like through this process, this process literally is what triggers you. Yeah. I mean, I read, right? I mean, I guess a little bit. So, yeah. I is that, guess that fair? Good. Um, so. <laughs> so, if we can make it through this process and clear this belief, this will be the first part of allowing someone to question you and ask questions and have a conversation with you without you feeling attacked. So, if you can bear with me, yeah. we'll yeah. stay calm okay. through this process. This is going to be way more threatening for you. Then where someone else who doesn't have your patterns just like, oh, answer, 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 yeah. answer, done. For you, though, this is actually the thing that makes you scared and the reason why we're, we're talking today, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to stick with you on this. Okay. And we're going to get through this together. Sound good? All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. So we're going to just kind of do a recap. What I understand is that when you're younger... You had a brother. Oftentimes, your brother would challenge you. He'd say things like, that's stupid, right? Just Actually, just like that. That's stupid. So, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, in a situation where your brother has that reaction, we agreed. You never actually saw, I'm stupid. You yeah. never saw that. What you actually saw is your brother saying you're stupid, right? That's the distinction. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah. Cool. So here's the next question. Let's say we go out to the park together and we see a brother telling another brother, you're stupid. What do we know about that second brother's intelligence just because the first brother said he was stupid? About his intelligence? Mm -hmm. um, that he's... Not not much. Nothing. Yeah. We literally know nothing. If someone walks into the room right now and says, Aaron, you're stupid. What do you know about my intelligence? Not a darn thing. Nothing. And then let's say another person walks in and goes, Aaron, you know what? You're stupid. And that's two people. What do you know about my intelligence? Because two people say I'm stupid. Still nothing. Nothing. If I told you that my older sibling when I was younger called me stupid every day when I came home from school, what do you know about how stupid I am? 
nothing and maybe a little bit of a jealousy problem. No, I maybe. Don't know. You don't I mean, know but maybe, sure. yeah. Yeah, but nothing. Yeah. Certain. yeah. But you don't know anything no. about my intelligence, right? No. You get that? And if we're yeah. at the park and we see two brothers and one brother's calling the other brother stupid, we don't know anything about the other brother's intelligence. So here's the million dollar question for you. What do I know about your intelligence and how stupid or not you are just because when you were younger, your brother called you stupid all the time? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I know nothing about your intelligence just because this person, one person out of 7 billion on the face of the planet, happened to call you stupid all the time. You follow? Yeah. Cool. Again, you intellectually get this. But when you're a kid and it's your brother and it's happening to you, it feels inside like, oh, my God, I'm stupid. I know you intellectually get right now that you're not. But yeah. man, when you're young and that happens, it makes you feel that way, right? Yeah. And can somebody call – I mean, like I say, we're, we're using stupid and I said stupid. But somebody can perceive stupid in different – by different actions or words. Sure. Right? So that's, I just wanted to, I just wanted to clarify that just because I think that was I don't think that you know stupid was used a lot, but I perceived through their actions that yes. that that's that was stupid. So yes, yes. And it could be a disapproving look, it could be a yeah. judgment, they could use the word dumb. It could have been like that combination of just like disapproving or shaking the head or whatever it was. Those things add up over weeks and months and years Yeah, you come to this conclusion. Like, Oh my God, all those things are happening. Cause it's stupid. Now you said something brilliant. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to shift things for you here. Okay. So it seemed like the action or the, the, the event of your brother calling you stupid of mm -hmm. your brother, or your grandparents shaking their head of them always questioning you. It seemed like that event made you feel I'm stupid, right? Yeah. Seems like it's pretty direct correlation. Here's the magic. This is where the magic happens. That event is meaningless. I don't know anything about you because the event happened. And an event that's meaningless can't force you to feel like I'm stupid. The person walks into my room and says, you're stupid. It can't force me to feel stupid, right? Yeah. So not the event. That's making me feel stupid. It's something else. And you nailed it. That something else is how you interpreted it, the event. Yeah. The event happened, your brother's going like, that's so dumb, shaking his head. You interpreted that to mean, I'm stupid. As soon as you gave it the story, I'm stupid, boom, that's what gave you the feeling inside that you've been carrying around all these years that you're stupid. It was the story you gave to his actions. If you had given his actions a different story, you never would have had the feeling that you were stupid. So let's make this real. Okay. Let's pop the story off that you gave it. Okay. Yeah. He's going, you're dumb, you're stupid, unbelievable. Wow, right? Let's pop off the story of I'm stupid. Let's pretend you had had an Auntie Erin with you. And I walk over and I go, Steve, your brother is so jealous. He is jealous of you and he is envious. And he is going to throw everything at you and try to make you feel bad to bring you down to his level. He's going to be mean. This is a brother thing. It has nothing to do with your intelligence. He doesn't even know anything about how smart you are or not. He has no idea. He's just jealous. So let's say Auntie Erin had told you that. And you looked at your brother and you're like, he's jealous of me? And I'm like, mm -hmm. you bet. You probably would have felt a little bad for him, right? Yeah. Right? So then the story, your brother's going, you're stupid. You're dumb. And you're going to give it a different story. You might give it the interpretation of, my brother is saying that because he's hurt and he's jealous. If you had given that same exact event, that story, He's hurt and he's jealous. What would you have felt? Would you have felt I'm stupid? No, not at all. Uh-uh. That would never have even showed up, would it? I see where so yeah. What would you have felt instead? Uh, probably a little bit of um, maybe a little more empathy toward towards him. A little uh, um, 
more supportive. Yes, I'm, I'm getting like chills. Like you, you get it. The feeling I'm stupid never would have been there. It never would have even crossed your mind because you'd yeah. be, you would have been looking at your brother going like, oh, he's jealous. If it had never crossed your mind when you were younger that you're stupid and you hadn't brought that with you through adolescence and into adulthood, would it cross your mind today as an adult? Nope. No. And that's because it was never the truth about you. If it was the truth about you like Steve. My name is Steve. There's nothing we can do to change that. There's nothing. Yeah. But I'm stupid was never actually the truth about you. All it was, was a byproduct of an improper story you gave to your brother's actions. You gave your brother's actions the wrong story. And as soon as you did, boom, you had the feeling. And then you walked around with this feeling thinking it was the truth about you. It was never the truth. It was a byproduct of a bad story. And what we did to prove that is we popped it off, gave you a different story, and you would have felt totally different about yourself. Even with your brother saying the same thing about you. Totally yeah. different feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I see how it's really easy to cling on to those same emotions and and action and actions with other people as well. Exactly. Once you have the belief, once you have that, and you're like, I I'm stupid. Then whenever somebody says something, you're like, Oh, they're right. Oh, they're right. You're gonna see it everywhere. But if I don't believe I'm stupid, and somebody walks into my room and they're like, You're stupid. I'm like, Get out of my room. Yeah. Like, go away. Don't be don't be ridiculous. Right? Yeah. So take a breath in and out. Great. Good job. And I want you to just say out loud, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. How does it feel to say that? Mm, senseless. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> senseless. Kind of almost silly, like saying I'm a scarecrow. Yeah. Do you see like the, sh the complete shift? Those words feel completely empty now. Once you delete or eliminate a belief yeah. and your brain realizes you never saw it, it's gone. It's like the belief in Santa Claus. That will not come back and bother you. And next time somebody challenges your intelligence, you're probably going to chuckle or be like, okay, go on with your day. It yeah. won't trigger you. We popped that button off that allows you to be triggered and it's gone. That's going to reduce your sensitivity. That's going to enable you to not be triggered and angry so much. Again, you may have other beliefs related to your pattern, yeah. feeling frustrated, but I really do think from listening to all the words that you used, I'm stupid is one of your bigger ones. Cause you like in, in your emails you've sent me and in the conversations we've had, you use that word over and over and over again. I think that was a big one. So clearing that out now that you don't believe it, that opens up all sorts of other possibilities for you to have different reactions, different emotions when people challenge you or even question you. Or even we do a process together. And as I'm digging, instead of you going, oh, this means I'm stupid, you're like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> different possibility. Yeah. And I'm like, where do I sign up to work with you more? <laughs> and, uh, like, uh... I need to congratulate you on eliminating your first belief. Like you did it and it's successful this will make a big impact in your life. This will change things. This this like takes a big filter off of your eyes and is going to allow you to see and experience things in different ways. And that's just one belief. Imagine clearing out 10 or 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, How do you do feel? Yeah. yeah. I, I, feel, I feel a lot um, more clear, just a lot more, I mean, the, a lot more warmth now, not, not, so, not so cold and chilled talking about it. Just because I knew it wasn't a, it wasn't true. Up here, but, you knew it wasn't true. Yeah, but some part of you is still holding on to it, and that's yeah. the part that causes us all the problems. Intellectually, we know we're not stupid. We know we're. It's not that we're not good enough. We know we're not not important. But like some old part, our sub in our subconscious is holding on to it, and that's what causes us all the problems. Yeah. Cool. Good awesome. work. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Hi, Joe. That was freaking amazing. <laughs> Steve, I know that was, I want to give you big thanks, Steve, yeah. because that takes some cojones to uh, yeah. to do this in front of folks, but really just for yourself. I think that's the biggest work. 
who cares about the others, obviously. <laughs> exactly. That's stupid. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. nailed it. And, and uh, it's so cool because like you took the words out of my brain as well. Cause when she asked you, it's like empathy, you know, empathy was the word for others. I, was, I wrote it down and then you said it. I was like, ha ha. I'm like, nailed it. Cause it's so hard to be in the driver's seat. Like you are there and think of that. And now um, <laughs> people are saying, this is awesome and all that. Yeah. This is super cool. So, you get people rooting along with you the whole time, but how do you how do you feel now? I mean, like, yeah, I think what what Aaron said or asked me, I feel like just kind of more re-energized. I feel um, <clears throat> just a lot bet more, uh, um, you know, less, I guess, less anxious. I mean, I I think going into this, I was probably a little had a little anxiety at going, oh crap, what's going to be in what's going to be uncovered and not even knowing exactly how it's going to pan out. And um, it's nice to kind of get those things out in the open and not just for myself. So I can get some clarity on maybe what I was holding on to in the past. And um, I tried to have actions to clear things up, but I wasn't getting to the root problem of it. So. Mm -hmm. Aaron's good like that. <laughs> it's it's true, man. It's uh and and as you were going through yours, I was like, yeah, I could I could that's probably a pattern of mine. It feels like a pattern or something similar to it that can trigger. And I mean, I'm just imagining everyone else listening. That's a good this is a good way to see how you can apply it to yourself as well. So yeah, props to you, Steve. Thank you, yeah. man. You're welcome. Sure. Thank thank you for having me on and thank you, Aaron, for uh, um, working with me on this as a, a demo i felt a little bit more than just a demo <laughs> so <laughs> i would agree with that uh, yeah, we, yeah. Went deep. we went like super big i was like you know what we could do i'm not successful and kind of strip that off of the top but i was like no no let's go let's go for like the big one let's go for the one that that's at the bottom that's guaranteed to be impacting you in different areas of your life impacting the conversations you're having impacting the work that you do Imagine trying to run your business and show up and follow instructions from mentors and courses. If in the back of your mind, there's a little part of you that's like, you're stupid. You're just stupid. You're not going to get this. You're stupid. Like this impacts so many different areas of life. So we went for something big and you are such a sport for playing along and going all in. And I'm, I'm just really tickled pink and proud of you. I think we, 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 we stripped the stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stripped it. Hey, Aaron, is there anything uh, kind of like uh, how you had me list out the no's and the stuff I wasn't committing to anymore? Is there anything like like homework wise that Steve should do and you would recommend others to kind of keep this in motion? Yeah. So honestly, the, the homework that I like to assign is super simple. It's basically grab a blank document and at the end of every day or twice a day or whatever cadence feels right to you, just don't go like two or three days without doing it. Reflect back on your day or the, you know, your morning or the evening and see if you notice what's shifted because this work is subtle. It's the subtraction, it's the removal of things. So you might get on phone calls and realize I was like 40% less anxious going into this conversation than I normally would, you know, and for one belief to have a reduction in, in, in anxiousness or anxiety, or you might go, the lady at the counter called me stupid under her breath and I just walked out the door and I, it didn't even bother me. I didn't notice. Those are the pieces of gold. You want to notice where those shifts are because you'll go through your day and you won't be triggered or you'll have less anxiety and things won't feel like a big deal. So you'll get to the end of your day and you'll be like, yeah, nothing's different. It was an easy day. But if you reflect back, you'll notice tons of little instances that would have been totally different had we not gotten rid of the belief. So it's a matter of bringing awareness to what you're experiencing in your day. And then that gets you to realize, whoa, this is actually a really big difference. But again, because it's so subtle and effortless and it's the removal of issues, we don't notice oftentimes unless we bring awareness to it. So grab a blank sheet of paper or a Google Doc or something and just reflect every few hours at the end of the day, like, what did I go through today and what was different? Notice the shifts that are happening, and that can be really exciting. So it's a lot, nice. lot of, a lot of micro changes. Yes, 
Yes, absolutely. Like people sometimes think it's going to be a big explosion or something, but usually these patterns are so interwoven into all the interactions and events that happen during over the course of the day that it's these this like the reduction in anxiety, you know, 50 times by 30% that you get to the end of the day and you have more energy or it's not getting triggered by your father and being able to make it through a conversation and go back to work instead of going like, I need to go for a run right now because it's so triggered. It's having, it's being able to reclaim energy and um, calm and peace in your day because things aren't triggering you and aren't pushing your buttons so much. Something, if I can, just, can I say something that I got out of it is that now instead of, I probably can't say foul language on here, but instead of say whatever um, you feel right. With. <laughs> so, so instead of like, thinking like in the past, I would just think like, uh, he's just a complete asshole, mm -hmm. you know? And now if when I now think about more like empathy, I'm not saying it's not going to happen again. I'm going to have to work on it, but yeah. now I can kind of have a different thought process, a thought pattern, why he might be saying that particular thing. Cause I can't, you know, we can't control people's thoughts, but it's how we react to them. And that's just something I've been, internally trying to work on myself because I think there was something that was festering and if it festers and it pops sometimes bad things well yeah bad things happen so that's a, a, a super important distinction and that's a tool that you just shared that anybody can use instantly to radically improve the quality of their life as they go throughout their day when something happens or someone does something to you, you can instantly play the alternative interpretations game. So if someone cuts me off on the highway. Like I, I, it's hard for me to believe that I used to, I used to be someone who'd be like, what an asshole, you know, I haven't gotten angry or had any road ragey or anything in years. And I for, like, it's, it's just, I look at other people who are like, why are you, why are you getting upset? And a lot of it is because I played this game so much. You know, I'd come in to the post office and someone would be double parked. And I used to be like, what an asshole. And then I might be like, what's another possibility? They were in such a rush and, you know, their kid is really sick. And if they don't get home on time, the babysitter's leaving. Or maybe they are, they're, they're having eyesight problems. They literally didn't see that they double parked. And they'd be humiliated and embarrassed to be called out about it. You know, like someone might come out and go, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, they like. I come up with all sorts of other possibilities. If someone cuts me off, it's like maybe they're late for work. And if they get late, you know, if they're late one more time, they'll be fired and they won't be able to take care of their family. Maybe there's a pregnant woman in the car. Or someone's in a lot of pain, you know, like there's so many other possibilities. And when you start throwing those out, the death grip we have to whatever showed up in our mind first, that person's got to be an asshole because it's the, the bias we have is somebody does something because of who they are. That's a, but we do things because of the circumstances, because we were stressed, because we were late, because someone did something to us. It's not because of who we are. But yeah. whenever somebody else does it, it's like, that's who they are. But when you break that apart, you know, what are some of the things that could be going on in their life that would have them act that way? It allows us to empathize. It allows us to release the anger. It allows us to go on with our day. It allows us to give other humans the benefit of the doubt and, and be more connected instead of disconnected and falling into hatred and, and frustration. That's great. I'm, I am really focused on relationships. And so when something like this, you know, happens, it's, it's, it's kind of painful. So I think getting past this is a huge thing and I might need to be doing some more work on this. Actually, I know not it's my, just, I, 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 I do. <laughs> so, uh, it's just a game. It literally is a game. You're like, Ooh, I'm angry. Okay. What are three other possibilities? Right. And, and you start, you start thinking that way. And it starts to become so automatic, you don't need to use it anymore. But until then, it's a little game you can play as you're driving around and going through your day. Awesome. Thank you very much, Aaron. You're so welcome. My hey, pleasure. Thank you, Joe. Gosh. Steve, yeah. you're amazing, man. You, you're the one that did the work here. <laughs> so, props to you, brother. No, it feels, and yeah, make it a game because that's what that's what works. It's a lot of littles that that just stack yeah. up and compound. And and yeah, be, be cool on yourself with it, too. It's not always easy. That's yeah. Give yourself some grace, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm telling right. myself often. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aaron, so, I mean, this is cool. I wrap around this for, for everyone. Um, I know we've been going a while, so I want to make sure that, you know, if they want to go reach out to you, contact you, whatever it looks like, give us the scoop here. 
um, people can go to mindfixgroup.com. Uh, definitely check out the results page. It's like three miles long. There's so much good stuff on there. You can see how quickly people change and get unstuck, how rapidly they get out of all of their problems, and all the different uh, outcomes that people can experience. So you can see people just like you getting exactly what they want. There's a case studies page as well. Um, I also have a free one hour training on the website that you can get for, um, it's just like a, a webinar you can grab. And it goes into more detail in terms of the thoughts and the behaviors and the emotions and how they all tie together and impact your actions and how you can go about clearing things out. It doesn't give you like the, the formula to do it for yourself, but it really flesh, takes what we talked about today and fleshes it out in more detail and gives examples, case studies, um, and walks you through everything you need to know to really have a solid understanding of what we're doing here. Uh, I, you can also find me, I'm, I'm the only Aaron file on Facebook. Uh, and so that's that's an easy find and I'm pretty responsive there as well. I've, I've definitely slowed down my social media use in 2020, but um, pretty active yeah. in terms of communicating with people. Yeah, well, I, I'm uh, posting that in the comments for everybody who just messed up that comment. There you go, mindfixgroup.com. And yeah, the free training, um, I actually have not checked it out, Aaron. Dang it. <laughs> I got to go get into that because I love this stuff. And um, and I actually wanted to give a shout out too, because I think you had some previous students watching, Timothy Dick being one of them. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he's still on, but he he liked it. Or, and, um, and you don't even know this yet, but he was on the podcast and like the first 10 minutes was him gushing about you and how he transformed up to find that video and send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's cool. It's not live yet. So uh, that's why I haven't really told you until now. He just reminded me. I was like, ah. so yeah, cool. huge thing. It doesn't matter who you are. This stuff works. So go check out our Aaron stuff, mindfixgroup.com. Um, she's amazing. Steve, you're awesome, man. So oh, thanks. Thanks. Bro love. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thank you for watching. If you're still this long with us, you guys are troopers too. So take care. And, uh, Put stuff in the comments too because we'll answer them if you have any other questions after this. All right. Thanks, y'all. Cool. Bye. Bye.